In the last video, we tried to build the cheapest electric boat that money could DIY, and it did not go very well. A much bigger cut than I wanted. Whoops. There's still some tack on it. In this video, we're actually gonna get this thing on the water. Hey everybody, AJ here, and welcome back to the Eagle Ray channel where we do all things DIY electric boats. Marine motors, batteries, solar panels, you name it. If it's got volts and it's on a boat, you're in the right place. Last episode, we built the deck for the world's cheapest DIY electric boat. And now it's time to attach the deck to the two kayaks that we'll be using as pontoons. The plan is to tie the main body of each kayak to the deck above with Dyneema rigging lines. But rope is not gonna quite cut it by itself. What we're gonna need to do is also attach mounting points to the transom of each kayak. The tail has a fairly flat vertical surface on the back here but I wanna be careful. I don't just want to mount a wheel there. I might want to mount different kinds of motors as well in the future. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill four holes into the rear and then four holes into the top. So eight total, and then we're gonna have an aluminum bracket that covers both of those surfaces. The metal needs to be cut to shape and then bent. And I think I can handle that part. Like I'm not a machinist, but I, I can chop some aluminum and who doesn't like hitting things with a hammer? Before I rip into some flat bar with my circular saw, I'm gonna need a template. Cardboard aided design to the rescue. Check this out, I cut this cardboard to the same thickness of my flat bar so that I could confirm this metal is gonna work before I actually start wasting it. I discovered something interesting too. The uh, back face of the kayak can uh, work with this same flat bar because this is four inches right here. And then all I need to do is slice it as it tapers toward the edge. And once I've got these two pieces welded together, then I just need to put some rectangular tube here and here and we'll drill holes in that so that we can mount anything we want to the back end after that without actually having to disturb the surface of the kayak anymore. What I can't do is weld. See, I just bought this welder recently and I have no idea how to use it and I don't have time to figure it out for this video either. So I think what we'll do is we'll make the parts for the transom bracket and, uh, and then we'll hire someone to weld them together. So without further ado, Let's build stuff. Four pieces of flat bar at 21 inches each. If you don't have a bandsaw or a chop saw, then a handheld will do fine in a pinch, but you absolutely must wear eye protection because the shards coming off of this will be out for blood. The handheld cuts pretty rough. Let's smooth that out. Safety first. Okay, so this plate here is gonna go on top of the back of the kayak. These Rectangular tubes here are gonna extend out from the rear of the kayak and on top of them we can place a plate that will have any interface we need. And so really the only thing left to do now is to weld these pieces together, just like that. Funny story, actually a couple funny stories here. So I know I said that I was gonna hire a welder. I decided to take a pause on this project for a week and learn how to weld myself. So what you're looking at here is the most beginner welding job in history. But I filmed the entire process of learning how to weld over the past week, so there's gonna be a video coming up about that. Um, so I'm not gonna focus too much on the mess that I made here. But the other funny story here is, you probably noticed these rectangular tubes are not where I said they were gonna be. The shape wasn't conforming to the back of the kayak. I realized all of a sudden it's upside down <laughs> and that my, my first thought was I need to throw this part away and start over. But then it occurred to me, well, this is just maybe extra brackets on top and I can make two more of these and also weld them right here. I just did a test fit and the free boards can actually sit right on top of this. We can make a joiner bracket and bolt it right here 
and screw it into the freeboards right above that. Might actually end up being pretty cool. Now, if you're worried that this hole compromises this kayak as a sit on top, you're absolutely right, but not to worry. We're gonna patch it when we're done. There we go. That's not gonna work. I gotta cut a bigger hole. To repair a hole in a kayak, you need three things. You need chicken wire, you need a butane torch, and you need some extra filler plastic, and you can salvage that from basically anything in your fridge. Beverage containers are made out of the same material, HDPE, as your kayak is. This stuff was really not working. It's a little bit too thin, and I think there's some kind of a composite film on it that was preventing it from melting the same way that this stuff does. I was able to put this piece on without any filler material whatsoever. So the butane torch was taking way too long, so I got online and I tried to figure out how the professionals do this, and it turns out they have a tool for it. This is a plastic welder, 20 bucks at the hardware store, so I figured I'd give it a try. I can already tell it makes all the difference in the world. The fact that you can apply heat and pressure at the same time is what's really going to get me through these seams just 10 times faster than before. So I'm almost done patching the second kayak, and then suddenly that happens. <laughs> this is all that's left of my plastic welder after one and a half patches to a kayak. And I really wasn't pressing that hard. I would call it medium pressure. I did not expect this thing to fall apart so quickly. I'm gonna go back and buy the $80 one and see if that one works better. Guys, every project has a moment that makes you feel like giving up and I have arrived at that moment. You saw me break this one, so I went to the same store and bought the bigger one for four times as much. This was 20 bucks, that's 80 bucks. This one broke after half hour of use. This one broke in 10 minutes of use. And then I went back and got it replaced with the same unit again. And that one just broke again in 10 minutes of use. Look how close I am to finishing the welding job. So I'm gonna actually waste my money on yet another one of these. Four welders at Harbor Freight in order to get this job done. Don't ever, ever buy from this company.
So we've got all the lines rigged. Both sides of each of those lines are coming out the freeboard here and here. And so basically we just need to tie these together. I know how to tie a bowline knot. The rabbit and through the hole and around the tree and all of that. That's what this is. So I tied one of those right at the end of this line. And then I actually tied another one. But when the rabbit went through the hole and came back out, I just let him run across the valley. So there's, there's lots of slack here before I tighten this knot down. And so now I have this loop and this loop. But on this side, I have lots of slack line that I can use to route through the first loop. One to one leverage. So if I pull one inch, it's gonna tighten the whole system by one inch. But the reason I have two loops is so that I can route this straight back through the second loop and create twice as much leverage. And then if I just hold this tension point so that it doesn't go anywhere, now I can take this extra slack and do what you would do when you tie your shoelaces. You just make a loop, wrap it around, and tie it off. Guys, I'm sailing. I'm a sailor. I sail. I'm sailing. I, I know it's pretty ridiculous. It's just a tiny boat with a tiny trolling motor, but I'm pretty excited because honestly, it, it is the first time I've successfully navigated any body of water by myself. And I kind of love it. I've been looking forward to this for a really long time. I think I'm doing something like two and a half miles per hour. And this is, I mean, this motor, is a hundred dollars on Amazon. Uh, about 1200 bucks into the hull. I mean, I spent more because you saw how many mistakes I made. But you can definitely do this for less than $2,000. I wish I could show you more footage of the maiden voyage, but unfortunately, everything kind of went off the rails a little bit. In the chaos, I wasn't able to film much, but those of you who have worked with kayaks before, you probably know what I'm about to say. You remember those holes that we drilled in the transom? Yeah, those are not waterproof. And honestly, I kind of knew that. I just didn't think it was going to be that bad. I thought maybe I'd take on a gallon of water after using the boat for an hour or so, and then I'd just empty the kayaks afterwards. No, <laughs> it was bad. I took on about 10 gallons in 20 minutes. Those kayaks were full of water before I could blink. Now, even though I didn't get any footage while things were going off the rails, I actually used to work in the VFX industry, so I was able to create a really high accuracy CG representation of exactly what it looked like, and here it is. I first noticed something was wrong when I couldn't steer anymore, and that's when I noticed the back end was sinking below the waterline. I did not have time to get back to the launch ramp. I had to abandon ship and drag the boat up onto the beach. Now, once I had a moment to breathe, I was able to get one final drone shot. Very sad, but at least I met a good Samaritan, a kayaker who ended up helping me carry the boat back up to my truck. The back end was so heavy from all the water intrusion that I couldn't get it out of the lake. I actually had to take the boat apart while it was still in the water. And that process took about two hours. So clearly this boat is not seaworthy yet, but I don't give up easily. I have two goals for this upcoming week. Number one, I'm gonna waterproof these kayaks. And number two, I'm gonna make sure that I can take these apart very rapidly. These bolts that are in the back take way too long. Those aren't gonna cut it. I'm gonna replace those with something a lot faster. Until then, thanks for watching. Join the live stream on Sunday at 2 p.m. where I am running a giveaway for this Milwaukee Angle Grinder. I'm gonna announce the winner as soon as we've reached 1,000 subscribers. Rules are in the description. And don't forget to boat safe and enjoy your time on the water.